Hello, my name is George from Australia and welcome to Gaming My Whole Life, where I discuss everything video game related, past, present and future. Well, buckle up my gaming friends as we are taking my time machine back to the glorious days of 1999. Nintendo was wowing the world with 3D Mario games, Zelda and many more during this time. But Sony, you know, the company who made TVs and made your Walkman or Discman, thought they would give gaming a shot. The nerve! They kept wowing us with impressive exclusive games and Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver was one of those mature titles that only the cool kids played. So let's be cool as dictated by those who existed during a time where colour on your mobile phone was considered a big deal. What you can see is gameplay I captured myself and I have to say this game is smexy. Smexy with a very dark sense of humour as we impale, set a light, impale some more, set a light some more, throw into acid water. I'm sure I was going somewhere with this. Screw it. Let's talk about why this game is so freaking great in every single possible way. Soul Reaver is just old school cool. A third person action adventure where your player is a vampire. But that wasn't enough. So instead of sucking blood, you suck souls. No seriously, let's kill a guy and see what happens. You see that? That colourful orb thing is its freaking soul. And like a vacuum cleaner, you just heave that in. Even how the body burns away after is badass. You can fight with your claws, hold multiple weapons like swords and spears, and even use rocks to smash your opponent's heads in. But here is the catch. They are vampires, or sorta, and their wounds heal. So once you have beat their butt enough, and you have compensated enough for the anger issues you have in your real life, you must ram them through. If you have a fire source, you can light them on fire. Or my favorite, use something in the environment. You can pick up dizzy foes and throw them a great distance, like impale them into the many spikes in the game world. War in random fire pits or into water. But remember, they have vampire blood in them, so it burns like acid. Not everything is about killing in the coolest way possible, hashtag life mission for every 90s kid, but the Soul Reaver had a lot of exploration to do. Huge environments that the developers did a great job making your adventures feel grand. Your wings, even though damaged, could still let you glide to different areas as you solved platforming puzzles. And I say this as someone who hates puzzles, I don't mind them in this game. It's not too rare you end up hitting a wall and thinking with frustration that you must have missed something. But stay 90s kid black glasses cool long enough and you will figure out what to do. Normally, just something needs to be pushed or flipped. It's designed clever enough that you normally accidentally do the right thing as you're cracking it. Testers, you really nailed it. Satisfying yet forgiving puzzles aside and the nice amount of <laughs> in between areas is the Mega Man power up system. See, I love the old Mega Man games and the fact that each time you beat a boss, you stole their powers. Well, Soul Reaver devs decided they like that too and each time you beat one of the game's bosses, you eat their souls because you're packing on weight for the winter like a good chubby angel of death. Anyway, these bosses' souls give the player a new ability each time a power up and they are very satisfying. They help you reach areas you couldn't access earlier or make you stronger with new moves. I'll share just one of the first power ups and keep the rest a secret. Joy of discovery, my gaming friends. You might want to hunt down a copy of this game or replay it after watching this smexy video. So one thing I have not mentioned yet and is pretty freaking cool is you can jump between two realms at any one time. One is for the living, whatever reality is, and one is for the dead. That's where souls and other monsters linger. The physical environment around, around you warps as well when you enter this green hue. Everything gets a green tinge in this world. 
So sometimes a blocked path shows a crack or an opening as you move about. You still have to obey the physics of the game in this place. You don't fly or gain superpowers, but after you beat the first boss, you do get a really good party trick that's sure to impress everyone. Behold, as I will myself through these gates. Which is a big deal as by the time you get this ability, you have seen so many gates you could not pass and now you can backtrack and discover lots of things. Also a quick shout out to the music and sounds of this game. It sounds great, it's moody but it's not super dominating and killing monsters sounds rather satisfying. Even the sound of your footsteps are nice, don't know why but it is. Everything about this game and its character is likeable. I mean, look at who you get to play as. He looks so freaking awesome. Imagine a remake of this game where you get God of War graphics, but it's him. Take my money now, I'd say. The game's balancing act is the most impressive part. The puzzle solving, the exploration, and wickedly satisfying combat means there is never a dull moment. Now make sure you subscribe to Game In My Whole Life before you leave. I release weekly videos on everything video game related and that includes modern topics, not just the retro stuff. God bless you all, take care and I'll see you next time or in the comments section below. Bye bye.